Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about the Mandelbrot set and stationarity. So to start off here, let's just define what the Mandelbrot set is, and then we'll dive into how this applies to stationarity within time series, and kind of the image and pictures that it gives us and why it's important. So before we dive in, let's just define what the Mandelbrot set is. Um, to start off with here, we need to understand um, that there are real numbers and imaginary numbers. Real numbers are numbers that we can count. Imaginary numbers we're going to define as i, and i is defined as the square root of negative 1. Some people write this as i squared is equal to negative 1, but the reason these are imaginary numbers is that the square root of negative 1 can't actually be taken in a real number form, and so we just denote this as i. So to do the Mandelbrot set, we need to look at some plane here. And this plane will represent complex numbers. So complex numbers, if you remember from school, is going to be some form of a plus b i, um, where both a and b are going to be real numbers. Um, and then as we said before, i is going to be the imaginary number, okay? And so you can plot this onto some field here where the real numbers are going to be our x-axis and then our y-axis is going to be the imaginary number. And so you can plot some dot here, and again, this could represent a plus bi. And so the mathematical function behind the Mandelbrot set is a function f c of z, which is going to be defined as z squared plus c. And for the Mandelbrot here, we are only concerned um, where the value z is equal to zero. So this can be set up as an example here. f, say two of z is going to be equal to, so we start off z with zero and we square that and we plus c, which is going to be two. And this will give us two. And for the Mandelbrot set, we end up iterating this process over and over and over again. And so you take the next one to be again f of two of z, which is going to be now our new z here, just two. And we do two squared plus two is going to be equal to six. And if you kept going down with this, you can see that the numbers basically explode. And if you kept going, you know, it would end up with some very, very large number here, um, which essentially would go to infinity or somewhat of infinity because we're using imaginary numbers, but the numbers would grow very, very large in size. And so this is one case. This is the first case where the numbers explode. Um, another example here, so this we'll call this case one, which is where um, you have the number, it just explodes very large, very fast. Um, our second case here, we'll call it case two, which we'll do an example of, is let's say we take, um, this function of negative 1, and this is going to be 0 squared, since we always start with 0, plus um, negative 1, and this will give us negative 1. Now if we iterate again, plug this back in, negative 1 squared plus negative 1, and this gives us 0. And if we do f of negative 1 of z again, we reiterate this again, we now take our 0 here, we plug it back in, plus negative 1, and this gives us negative 1. And if you see, this will continue on to be 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1. And the second case is where the output from this iterative process does not explode. It does not go into this crazy infinite series into a very large number. Um, it actually stays bounded into a reasonable realm. Okay, so in these two cases, you have one where the numbers grow extremely fast, and you have a second case where the number seems to be stable um, as we iterate across time. All right, so this is what the Mandelbrot set looks like. Um, everything that is in black on the Mandelbrot set is going to be something that is stable. So it will not go to a very large number no matter how many times you iterate. Um, so in a stats perspective time series here, we're gonna blend this in. Um, as time goes on, so as the iterations continue, it's going to stay stable no matter how many times you go out, no matter how many iterations you have. What makes the cool colors in this Mandelbrot series is the fact that 
is you get closer and closer and closer to the black set, right? The numbers will actually grow large at a slower rate. As you move further and further away from um, the Mandelbrot set, so anything, for example, outside of two will be one color because it explodes very, very fast uh, into a very large number. And what makes this problem extremely interesting is that when you zoom into different parts of the Mandelbrot set, we will see that all of these numbers that don't explode, which is the Mandelbrot set, it ends up repeating itself in different areas of the graph as well. So we zoom in and we zoom in and a lot of times you'll find the same shape. And then also when you zoom into different areas of the chart, um, you'll end up with really cool geometric shapes and the colors change. And again, the colors are happening because it's the speed at which these numbers um, explode. So how does this relate to time series? Well, as I mentioned before, that iterative process, we can do that as a timestamp, okay? So when we do the first calculation, we can say it's time t. Doing that first iteration would be time t plus one. Doing another iteration would be time t plus two, and so forth out to infinity. So many time series models will actually have what a lot of people like to refer to as memory, but these are going to be autoregressive or moving average models. A simple example of this is if you had, say, y of t plus one, and this value is going to be equal to some beta coefficient that we're going to estimate here, times y of t, okay? So it's today's period will help us to predict tomorrow. There are many things in time series applications where this makes a lot of sense and is a desirable characteristic. We understand that today's value is, you know, x, and tomorrow is gonna be somewhat dependent on today, and so therefore there's going to be this relationship. A lot of times this can actually be rewritten as y of t plus one is equal to rho times y of t, where rho is going to be the correlation between today and tomorrow. The Mandelbrot set here, the takeaway I want you to look at here is that the shapes are very unique and they're pretty mesmerizing in general, but that shape is extremely complex and hard to predict. So anything in black in a time series state would be stationary. What that means is, again, the mean and the variance would be somewhat constant and predictable. That explosion that we see in the other data sets means that the variance is changing very, very fast. Therefore, it is not a stationary process. So everything inside that black, the Mandelbrot set itself, can be viewed as stationary. The point I want to take away here is that in the real world, we're typically dealing with just the real number line. It's not as simple as within a circle. So value less than this, greater than this. If you start looking at imaginary numbers, and we'll do another video later, we start adding into multiple components into time series models, the complexity gets very, very complicated very, very quickly. And this Mandelbrot set, the details, the geometry behind it, right, it's very like mesmerizing, but at the same time, that complexity is what we have in time series. And I think it's important to note, because when you build models, a lot of times people will build models not understanding the concept of stationary. And I'm hoping this video will give you kind of a takeaway. When you get close to the edge, where it's solid black, it's in the Mandelbrot set, and you start getting closer away from it, so it's outside of it, but just a little bit, sometimes it can take, you know, 100, 200, 300, 400 periods before all of a sudden it becomes unstable, and then it skyrockets off and it explodes, okay? And in time series applications, especially in finance, um, we have smaller data sets. And so when you start building models and people start saying, oh, I don't need stationarity, I built this model, it looks stable, I did some ad hoc analysis, right? You didn't do an actual statistical test. What ends up happening is you might be on that edge and you don't know it, and it could blow up in one period, two periods, six periods, 10 periods, 100 periods, we just don't know. So I'm hoping you realize from this video, stationarity as a concept is very complex, and I think the Mandelbrot set really helps me at least think about the complexity behind kind of explosions of numbers and instability within mathematical equations. It gives you more of an insight into what could happen, um, again, in kind of financial markets and modeling and why things don't always work out the way you think they will work out, even when you do basic, simple ad hoc analysis, or even when you think there's a theory backing it, a lot of times we just don't know. Anyways, that's it for the Mandelbrot set and stationarity. Later, we'll talk about another concept related to the Mandelbrot set, um, as well as stationarity and ARIMA-style models. Anyways, hit that bell button below if you want updates of our videos that get published every Sunday at noon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.